It's week 27 of A Year of Wisdom. Let's get to reading. Day 186 Job 5 Call now, is there anyone who will answer you? To which of the holy ones will you turn? For wrath kills the foolish person, and anger slays the silly one. I myself have seen the fool taking root, but suddenly I cursed his place of residence. His children are far from safety, and they're crushed at the place where judgment is rendered. Nor is there anyone to deliver them. The hungry eat up his harvest and take it even from behind the thorns, and the thirsty swallow up their fortune. For evil does not come up from the dust, nor does trouble spring up from the ground. But people are born to trouble, as surely as the sparks fly upward. But as for me, I would seek God, and to God I would set forth my case. He does great and unsearchable things, marvelous things without number. He gives rain on the earth and sends water in the fields. He sets the lowly on high that those who mourn are raised to safety. He frustrates the plans of the crafty so that their hands cannot accomplish what they have planned. He catches the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the cunning is brought to a quick end. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope about in the noontime as if it were night. So he saves from the sword that comes from their mouth, even the poor from the hand of the powerful. Thus the poor have hope, and iniquity shuts its mouth. Therefore blessed is the one whom God corrects, so do not despise the discipline of the Almighty, for he wounds, but he also bandages. He strikes, but his hands also heal. He will deliver you from six calamities. Yes, in seven, no evil will touch you. In time of famine, he will redeem you from death, and in time of war, from the power of the sword. You will be protected from malicious gossip and will not be afraid of the destruction when it comes. You will laugh at destruction and famine, and need not be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For you will have a pact with the stones of the field, and the wild animals will be at peace with you. And you will know that your home will be secure, and when you inspect your domains, you will not be missing anything. You will also know that your children will be numerous, and your descendants like the grass of the earth. You will come to your grave in a full age, as stacks of grain are harvested in their season. Look, we have investigated this, so it's true. Hear it and apply it for your own good. Proverbs 5 My child, be attentive to my wisdom, pay close attention to my understanding, in order to safeguard discretion, and that your lips may guard knowledge. For the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and her seductive words are smoother than olive oil. But in the end she's bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps lead straight to the grave lest she should make level the path leading to life. Her paths are unstable, but she doesn't know it. So now, children, listen to me. Do not turn aside from the words I speak. Keep yourself far from her, and do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your vigor to others and your years to a cruel person. Lest strangers devour your strength and your labor benefit another man's house, and at the end of your life you will groan when your flesh and your body are wasted away. And you will say, How I hated discipline! My heart spurned reproof. For I did not obey my teachers, and I did not heed my instructors. I almost came to complete ruin in the midst of the whole congregation. Drink water from your own cistern, and running water from your own well. Should your springs be dispersed outside your streams of water in the wide plazas, let them be for yourself alone, and not for strangers with you. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in your young wife. A loving doe, a graceful deer, may her breasts satisfy you at all times. May you be captivated by her love always. But why should you be captivated, my son, by an adulteress, and embrace the bosom of a different woman? For the ways of a person are in front of the Lord's eyes, and the Lord weighs all that person's paths. The wicked will be captured by his own iniquities, and he will be held by the cords of his own sin. He will die because there was no discipline. Because of the greatness of his folly, he will reel. Ecclesiastes 5 Be careful what you do when you go to the temple of God. Draw near to listen rather than to offer a sacrifice like fools. 
for they do not realize that they are doing wrong. Do not be rash with your mouth or hasty in your heart to bring up a matter before God, for God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore let your words be few. Just as dreams come when there are many cares, so the rash vow of a fool occurs when there are many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in paying it. For God takes no pleasure in fools. Pay what you vow. It is better for you not to vow than to vow and not pay it. Do not let your mouth cause you to sin, and do not tell the priest it was a mistake. Why make God angry at you so that he would destroy the work of your hands? Just as there is futility in many dreams, so also in many words. Therefore, fear God. If you see the extortion of the poor or the perversion of justice and fairness in the government, do not be astonished by the matter, for the high official is watched by a higher official, and there are higher ones over them. The produce of the land is seized by all of them. Even the king is served by the fields. The one who loves money will never be satisfied with money. He who loves wealth will never be satisfied with his income. This also is futile. When someone's prosperity increases, those who consume it also increase. So what does its owner gain except that he gets to see it with his eyes? The sleep of the laborer is pleasant whether he eats little or much, but the wealth of the rich will not allow him to sleep. Here is a misfortune on earth that I've seen. Wealth hoarded by its owner to his own misery. Then that wealth was lost through bad luck. Although he fathered a son, he has nothing left to give him. Just as he came forth from his mother's womb, naked, will he return as he came. And he will take nothing in his hand that he may carry away from his toil. This is another misfortune. Just as he came, so will he go. What did he gain from toiling for the wind? Surely he ate in darkness every day of his life, and he suffered greatly with sickness and anger. I have seen personally what is the only beneficial and appropriate course of action for people, to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all their hard work on earth during the few days of their life which God has given them, for this is their reward. To every man whom God has given wealth and possessions, he has also given him the ability to eat from them, to receive his reward and to find enjoyment in his toil. These things are a gift of God. For he does not think much about the fleeting days of his life because God answer. keeps him preoccupied with the joy he derives from his activity. And you, as always, thank you so much for being here today. Much for if you haven't already, hit that subscribe right there. And click the and bell so you can get notifications you, on new videos. Would you hit that like button for me as well? And I will see you tomorrow. Maranatha!